My friend watched the new Sabrina series and wanted someone to talk about it with, so I obliged. I watched it. But I couldn't just I couldn't just leave it at that. I have questions. So many questions. Let me preface this video by saying that no, I had no idea that there was even a Sabrina comic, let alone have I read it or seen anything about it. I didn't even realize that the title sequence was in comic style to reference the comics until I watched it again a second time around, the whole series again a second time around, to write something of a script that I'm reading right now because I've never done a video like this before, okay? I have so many thoughts and I just had to write them down. Yes, I'm going into this series with an open mind. No, I do not expect it to be like the original Teenage Witch version, and if it isn't explicitly implied from the get-go with blue hues of the shots and constant smoke coming from somewhere, this version of Sabrina is, ooh, ah, creepy and scary. Normally I'm the sort of person that when I get into a show or something, I immediately go into the internet and watch like a video about about it later on or I go on Reddit or something like that, but I honestly have not really watched anything or read anything about Sabrina because yeah, I decided I had my own thoughts on it and I didn't sort of want to get my judgment clouded or get any thoughts from anywhere else um, before starting my own videos, I guess, but no one cares. So let's just begin at the start. Episode one, October Country. We start the episode with introductions. Sabrina is introduced and we have a basic Nancy Drew character that just smiles. And we have her friends who are walking behind her and standing behind her, you know, because they're secondary characters. If the audience didn't already know that that's what the director was implying, there it is. And there's Roz, who's a pretty cool chick, and Susie, who's a pretty cool trans boy, and Harvey, who is the love interest who can't seem to open his eyes properly. And they all have very normal 16 year old intellectual discussions all the time. Miss Wardwell is introduced and she is your librarian S character played by Michelle Gomez and Sabrina feels sorry for her because she's meek and lives alone and frightens easily. She has a relationship and it's so effing cute and look at how adorable it is and how cute this guy looks and oh my god look at it! Sabrina's family is finally introduced. There's Zelda, okay, Miranda Otto, I dig. And Hilda is, uh, is she British? And there's Ambrose, I don't know who that is, but he's apparently British as well. And ooh, talks of necromancy already at the table. They're all witches, see? Just talk about necromancy just casually, so they must all just be witches. Amber is literally referred to Sabrina as cousin. Why, thank you, writers, for so craftily including that fact there for me. Straight into another one about familiars and how they're goblins that serve Cubans but in disguise. Oh, and there's a demonicon. Demonicon. What the hell is that? Now she's in the woods and the camera is all blurry again and these mean girls are surrounding her and she's looking around all pissed being like what are you doing are you cursing me and she just doesn't do anything about it so yeah she just stands there and she gets cursed <laughs> miss world was back again and what the heck she's sauntering she's sauntering and her hair is down and oof she is hot oh yeah that's right, what happened? It's not the same bloody woman, is it? Some demon after Sabrina took over Miss Woodwell's body and totally changed the way that she talks, her posture, her demeanor, her style of clothes, her favorite makeup looks, everything has changed, but nobody bloody notices. Nancy Drew, Nancy Drew doesn't suspect a thing. She just squints at her and is like, hmm, maybe a midlife crisis and dismisses it. I mean, how bloody unperceptive do you have to be? How self-involved do you have to be to not like think about that for just a second more? Come on, Sabrina. So Sabrina, uh, she is fibbing about her birthday plans and walks with Harvey in the forest and lies more and then tells the truth, but then takes it back by erasing her boyfriend's memory because she didn't want to deal with him being uncomfortable around her. She just didn't want to have to deal. So it's probably just better to just erase the memory and, you know. 
Then she comes home and Ambrose is sitting there with his smoky cauldron, which only purpose it serves is so that he has a constant supply of dry ice around him at all times because ambiance. Sabrina has some vision in a bathtub of her parents with a baby, but there are twins and one is a devil baby. And does Sabrina have a twin? But this leads Sabrina to questioning whether or not she should get baptized at all. Then a young man comes in for burial because the Spellmans contribute to society and earn muggle money by burying the dead people. And this man is a bit different. He, uh, he has a mark, hey. It's like a witch's mark or something. Well, let's just dismiss that and drain his blood for our baptism ceremony. And Zelda offhandedly implies that they're cannibals. Sabrina, like, makes this whole deal about um, having a familiar choose to be her familiar. So that's how Salem gets on board. I don't know. And that leads to Salem saving Sabrina in a maze. And then Sabrina goes to a magic tree and eats the maggoty fruit of truth and sees another vision where everything's on fire and there's witches hanging in the tree. And the devil goat man is birthed right from the tree and reaches out to Sabrina and then she's back in reality. But the camera's still all blurry. And her aunt's entertaining in the parlor, and here's another introduction, and it's Dracula! Ha 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 ha! And Sabrina, this smarty pants, doesn't know who he is because she's never been introduced to him before by her aunties, but her aunties don't care about that. They shame her in front of him and make her seem stupid by explaining to the audience who this pompous man is. Oh, and he's the high priest, by the way, but let's just call him Dracula because come on. And I'm so confused. Like, why does Sabrina not know all this stuff about her baptism or the high priest or anything else? Wouldn't Zelda teach her? But anyway, <sighs> the episode is finished. What a ride. That episode two, the dark baptism. So this episode has the same director as the first. So we get these foggy blurry shots again with the creepy ambient music. Dracula is still in the parlor by the fire and he tries to calm Sabrina about her qualms and the baptism and dismisses the vision she got when she ate the mangoty apple. Dracula goes and looks at the weird body too. Yes, it's weird. Good, good, carry on, not gonna say anything about it. Ambrose implies he could have been killed by witch hunters. Let's see if that ever gets mentioned again. Harvey has um, a lot of questions about uh, Sabrina's birthday. It's still very awkward around uh, Harvey and the family. I don't really understand how long have they been dating for. They seem to be dating for a long time. It's never explained. Susie then gets beaten up by jerks and Sabrina starts a Wicca group. It stands for the Women's Intersectional Cultural and Creative Association. And uh, Susie gets beaten up by the jerks again and gets a suspension, I think, because they were tearing down the awesome Wicca posters that they made. The Weird Sisters get called. Sabrina is just apparently really good at memorizing summoning spells and they're racist towards Sabrina and agree to go pick on some boys for her. Sabrina seems to conjure up some outfit that matches theirs, but in red because she's the star of the show, guys. They lead the boys into the mines like creeps and then they trick them like creeps, but that's not enough for the weird sisters. Oh no, they want to jinx their penises or something. So they do that. Yeah. Zelda kills Hilda and buries her, but it's okay because Hilda comes back to life and digs herself out of the grave and Zelda calls in sick for Sabrina and totally ruins her plans for her last day with her friends and is totally insensitive about it because reasons. And this causes Sabrina to have more questions that I thought by now she would know about this baptism thing that she's kind of always known about. But I don't know, it lets Ambrose explain more. So whatever. Sabrina comes down, dressed all nice, and it's very reminiscent of the 50s and apparently Riverdale, which no, I don't know anything about. Don't enlighten me. Even the music playing is old and gramophone -y. They even go to the party and there's some newer hipper music on, you know, because it's a party. And Sabrina fake smiles to the extras, always fucking smiling. And the friends come out. We start with Rose, who looks awesome in her gold pigeon hat. Don't really know how traditionally Egyptian that is, but I do love everything Egyptian and gold. So 10 out of 10, great costume design. The eyeshadow was a great touch. Then Susie's in the kitchen dressed, oh, like the high priest guy, Dracula. Then fittingly, oh, so fittingly, it's almost like this could have been done before. They have the monster mash on. 
while they dance. And then there's more 1950s style music with slow dancing cute couple moments and some tension because Sabrina is shady as fuck and she hasn't kept an eye on the time like a fucking moron and bounces on foot apparently to this satanic ritual. And after all that running, Sabrina is shiny. She's so shiny. I mean, I know I would totally be red faced and sweating, but Sabrina's fine. She's cool. She must have like magic sweat glands or something. Then her dress turns black. I mean, honestly, why would Hilda like not have just bought a black dress in the first place? I mean, she's been to one of these herself, I would assume. And when Sabrina gets through the portal of blue flames, it's pretty clear that there's a dress code. But then Sabrina is disrobed anyway down to her slip, which for some reason is still white and for some reason is not sweaty at all. And so I guess it doesn't really make much sense. Sabrina uh, starts getting baptized, but she doesn't sign her name into the book because she remembers the burning tree vision and sees her parents or something and she, Honestly, she's only really started thinking about this whole baptism thing properly like less than a week ago. So she's got a lot to think about, so she splits. More high intensity running, but at a much higher level of intensity. And Sabrina is out of breath and very shiny and dirty, but she's still not sweaty. And the coven follow her and seem to catch up with her very easily, even though they're seemingly just walking. And I wouldn't even classify it as a brisk pace, but Ambrose has her back and Sabrina says, no and they are mad, but they go away. Miss Wardwell, who has been creeping in the background of so many scenes, is now kissing a cloven foot and pledging allegiance to the dark side. I'm not really sure why this episode didn't finish here, but anyway, now it's apparently several days later in the time of mourning, and Zelda has been given Sabrina the silent treatment like a child over the weekend, but now gets mad at Sabrina, and we realize that yes, Zelda was acting like a child because instead of talking to her niece about why she ran away like a responsible parent, I say again, she was ignoring and giving the silent treatment to Sabrina. Excellent. Then it ends with 80s style uplifting music with some female teenagers getting obviously fake excited about this shitty wicked group. Then the Dark Lord sends a message through a rabid principal, I don't care. Next. I have a dick on my face, don't I?